Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today we are playing The Outer Worlds. And, um, yeah, so if you're unaware, it's, uh, basically Fallout New Vegas' spiritual successor. It's made by Obsidian, and, uh, it's a fun first-person RPG. And it's set in space, and it looks cool, and I wanted to play it, because, uh... Well, it's my channel, I can do what I want, so we're gonna play it. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna play as an idiot, because I think that'll be funny, and that is an option in this game. So, we're gonna start a new game. I'm just gonna play on normal difficulty, because I haven't played through before. Story is just like, combat doesn't even matter, really. Um, so we want some challenge, but also, I don't know what I'm doing yet, so we're gonna go normal difficulty. Um, I'm gonna make sure subtitles are on for everything, because of course, you know, you guys might mishear things and stuff. It's a video, I wanna make sure you guys can get all the information you need if you need to. So, let's continue on. Hundreds of thousands of colonists left to drift out here forever just to keep from damaging the board's bottom line. Disgraceful. Okay, so the plan here, of course, intelligence down. That's very That's important. Right, friend. I'll be the brains for both of us. Oh. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, so we will react to our stats, which I think is really fun. But uh, one thing I do want to do is basically have maximum charm. You're easy to like. Should come in handy if you're stopped by a guard. Because the plan is to play kind of like, uh, sort of like a jock, uh, essentially. So we're very dumb, but, you know, we're athletic. Uh, that's kind of the thing I was, you know, I'm hoping to go for. So, um, yeah, we're going to be uh, very likable. We're going to have, you know... Our companions are going to be very, very loyal and very, very capable um, because they're going to think we're great um, because we're so handsome. So that's the idea. But we will be just very uh, mentally deficient, which I think would be quite funny. So I do want to put my temperament up as well um, a little bit, I think. And let's put up strength and dexterity because we're good sportsmen. Uh, perception, I think. No. <laughs> I don't think we'd have great perception. Um, but I don't know, maybe catching footballs, right? You know, because, uh, yeah, my character's American, I've decided, okay? I've decided my character's American. I'm going with that classic, like, American jock thing. Um, so that's what I'm going for. But it's quite difficult to figure out which, which stats are most important here. Um, ideally, I'd go well below average, but below average is actually the worst you can have. That's the stupidest you could be, um, which is a shame. If it could go lower, I'd make it lower, <laughs> all right? So anyway, let's put up... Yeah, mm, strength or dexterity. What was his sport, guys? What was his sport? Uh, was it was it wrestling or was it track and field or something? You know what was it? Um, I might go with dexterity. Okay, I'm gonna go dexterity. I think. But the main thing is he's very charming and he's very stupid. Um, that's the plan. Also, temperament is good. That will put up uh, determination, which is good for companions. And that's kind of what I wanted, um, you know, with these two. So inspiration is also for companions. There's a lot of skills which we'll get to uh, now. Here we go. So here, we can only choose two, um, basically two blocks. So it'll be however many skills are in there. So dialogue, I hope all these three will go by ten. To 
I hope I hope we haven't either. And also leadership as well. German material, or at least captain. So there we go. So uh, inspiration is going to be nice and high. So that will actually let our companions do special attacks. I don't know when we get companions. Um, so far, I've basically just played uh, probably not even all the tutorial, honestly. Like, almost nothing. I want to just be as blind to play through as possible because I want to be as surprised by the answers as you lot. So, um, oh, that is another thing, actually. Um, so a lot of you will be able to get ahead of me in this game very, very quickly. So no spoilers, please. Okay, I want to be surprised. I don't want any spoilers. Okay, but the beauty of it is there's a lot of different options in this game, so I might play it a totally different way, and hopefully you guys can find enjoyment of that if you are playing along with me, um, or playing through way ahead of me. So anyway, so dialogue and uh, leadership are going to go up. Um, a oh, steady hand at the yeah, helm. yeah, those are the two biggest things that we want. Okay, those are the two biggest things we want, I think, because I want to be very charming, is the thing. I want to be very charming, but stupid. So, moving on to aptitude. So, these are pretty wonderful, actually. They're all, um, they're just different jobs, essentially. So, uh, we've done an aptitude test, and it'll say what we're good at, right? What we should be doing, because this is a very corporate, um, galaxy that we live in, um, which is very fun. It's all owned by corporations, and it's very much about the corporate life. So, aptitude, it's not going to be necessarily, um, things we're good at. It's going to be specific job roles that, uh, they want to enroll us in. So, I think I'm going to go with no discernible aptitude. You're because so we're much dumb. More than your designated profession. Except this one is also quite good, because it's it's tossable, but I don't think we'd ever be caught dead being the mascot. But I think, actually, it would be kind of ironic if we were on the tossball team, and um, then as soon as we left, you know, college or whatever, um, we did an aptitude test and it said we'd make a great mascot, because we're too dumb to be doing anything else. Um, so I think that's kind of a good idea, actually. I think that could be really fun. It'll put up inspiration. Uh, that'll put up determination. Um, but no, okay, let's go with Tossable Mascot. Oh, I think that'd just be the ultimate irony. May be irreparable. <laughs> so, uh, here, there isn't a problem in all the cosmos that Team Spirit and a big stick couldn't solve together. Your last major head injury in the field knocked some extra cheer into you, and you've been a rising star in Tossable's competitive mascot food chain ever since. It doesn't matter that no one else knows your face under the mask, you share glory with the team. And uh, we are very handsome, so it is a real pity. Speaking of handsome, we're going to have to try and work that out. So, playing as an idiot, um, I normally play as women in games like this, but, uh, well, it, it would be a bit insincere and a bit... I mean, I'm playing as a complete, like, moron, I, and I, I just don't think I can play as a stupid woman. Um, but, stupid guy, brilliant. So, face. Let's do something about this face. Hmm. Okay. Uh, he has the potential to be chiseled. Let's go with that. Skin tone. Let's give him a bit of a tan, I think. Yeah, something like that. Eye colour. Something striking. Something striking. Wow, okay. These get very striking. Worryingly striking, in fact. Yeah, I was thinking like a nice striking blue, but like... Flippin' heck. Like, irradiated. I mean, that's piercing. That's pretty piercing. Something like that. Very striking. Let's go with that. And, uh, wow, everything's on average, is it? Everything's on average. Okay, let's go with... Stronger jaw. Okay, go with a strong jaw. Actually, pretty handsome already, huh? It's pretty handsome already. Eye size. That just makes it more anime. Fine. Brow, vertical. Just... A little more stern, or like... Oh, oh I'm a bit concerned now. Probably split the difference. Brow forward. Again, just looking more quizzical that way. That's deeply concerned. This is more his emotion than his face. You know what I mean? Okay, strong brow. Strong brow. I'd say this is a handsome guy, isn't he? He's a handsome guy. Let's look at features. Um, so makeup, dirt, scars, age, all down. Hair. Let's give him. Let's give him some more fancy hair. Oh wow, that's pretty fancy. Yeah, he looks pretty handsome. Uh, facial hair. Designer stubble. Hey, it's got to be, right? It's got to be. Uh. Nah. Uh, what's going on there? Oh, wow. That's pretty cool, actually. Um. Whoa. Wow. Pretty fancy hairstyles. Whoa. Look at that. Wow. Uh, this guy's in a band. This guy's in a band. Not that it would go for. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, now there. That is a that is a dumb man. That is a stupid man. Let's go with dashing blonde, maybe. Oh yeah, there we go. That's our boy. That's our boy. All right, that's our beautiful idiot. That's our prince charming. This is the tick. This is him. This is him, guys. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, superb. And uh, yeah, yeah, that'll do. And our name is. Oh, no, that's a tough one. Jack Package. It's pronounced Package. Jack Package. That is definitely his name. Perfect. Next up. Summary. Yeah, fine. That's cool. That's all good. All fine. So, um, inspiration. Nice and high. Uh, good at... Sadly, better at lying and intimidating than persuasion, which I think is a bit sad. We will want to put up persuasion separately when we uh, when we get there. That's the one I really want. But 25 seems to be pretty good compared to our other stats, so that'll do. Um, and then in terms of just fighting, like all of our actual combat skills are terrible here. But what I love about this is if we look at the special um, abilities here, um, these extra skills that you get, um, you can see we can scramble auto-mechanicals. Uh, with Persuade, you can have humans cower after you first hit them. With Intimidate, you can have creatures run away. So even even just the speech checks in this game, they have an application during combat, which I think is brilliant. So you can... The fact that you're forced to fight a lot, because it's that kind of game, you can still go very much as the face, but it'll still apply to combat. And that's brilliant. So few RPGs do that. They let you build your character however you want, but you're still useful in, like, the core gameplay loop, which for this is, you know, fighting through places. You can sneak around them, of course, but you've still got to deal with enemies somehow. Um, you could sneak away, you know, but you might not want to. If you're not playing a sneaky character, you can still play as the face, walk straight in. If they attack you, you'll still get bonuses against them, which I think is great using this stuff. I think it's really cool. I think it's really fun. It just gives you a lot more variety of how the game's going to go. And uh, I appreciate it. So, let's hop in. Looks to be your lucky day, my friend. Initiate skip jump. There you are, wondering what's going on, eh? Bit of bad news there, I'm afraid. Your colony ship was inexplicably knocked out of skip space and forced to complete its journey at sublight speeds. This means that you and every other colonist on hope have been in suspended animation for 70 years, give or take. Normally, <laughs> reviving someone after so long leads to some quite horrifying results. It's called explosive cell death, but it's really more of a liquefaction. Something wrong? Oh, yes, well, not to worry. I've pumped your body full of a special concoction I devised to keep you from dying so horrifically. Hopefully at all, but uh, I guess we'll see, yes? Yeah? Unfortunately, I used the last of my chemical supplies saving you. I know it's a lot to ask, but I must have your help securing more if we're to save the rest of your fellow colonists. I'd see it done myself, of course, but the board has a sizable bounty on my head. Now, my ship is inoperative, but I've managed to hire a smuggler to help you out. He'll be... Oh, I see we're in position. Good luck! Can 
you hear me? Is this thing working? Ah, there you are. Now, uh, where were we? Oh, yes, the smuggler. His name is Hawthorne, and he should be waiting for you at the landing site. He's to be your uh, chauffeur, so to speak. And not to worry, I'm told he's a specialist. Dashing gunslinger, one of a kind ship, that sort of thing. You'll like him, I'm sure. I've also outfitted you with a simple wireless monitor, so I can track your progress. I'll check in with you as soon as you land. Good luck. I'm... all the colonists are counting on you. Well, this is a suspect. I'm sure we'll be fine. I'm sure we'll be fine. We upside down? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Nope, nope. Uh, no, no, we are the way, right way up. Good. Huh? Hawthorne should be close by. What in law's name? Is that him? Oh, that idiot! I told him to plant the beacon and move away, not stand Very close by. It. Oh well, no sense in letting his ship go to waste. All right. So um. Hawthorne won't mind you taking his ship. Better you than the board, huh? I'm He's... sure I trusted the fellow. Might have gone after the bounty on my head. Shame about the whole squashing thing. Nasty way to go. So yeah, he's still actually holding on to the beacon, too. He's actually holding on to it. <laughs> Poor lad. Alright, so, uh, yeah, this is gorgeous. This is stunning. I love it. Um, I had actually heard complaints about the graphics, which I don't think I... I don't think people understand what graphics are. Um, that say that, because, uh, look at the little ships up there. Beautiful. Um, I think they're just confusing, um, graphics with realism. I wouldn't want this to be realistic. I love that it's fantastical, and everything about the game supports that. It's got a really good, like, just a beautiful aesthetic. You know, a fantastic art style. I think it looks fantastic. Also, just like little things here, um, you can see the sun actually coming through the trees, giving this orange hue. It looks gorgeous. It looks absolutely gorgeous. It's really well done. It's got a lot of good, like, bells and whistles graphically in here. But, you know, it does look realistic. But hey, it's a game about space and nonsense. It's great. Oh, hello. Hello, you. Oh, no, 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 come back. Come back. Oh. He's scaled. Aw. Poor little guy. All right. Left, uh, left shift to sprint. Cool. Thank you. Can do. And uh, left control to sneak. I don't think we need to sneak up from this guy. Um, he's not about to catch us. Alright. Uh, while sneaking, use tall grass, rocks, or other cover to hide from enemies. Use this sneak, uh, use this to sneak past enemies or sneak up to them to initiate combat. So, one thing that I can't tell if I love it or hate it at the moment, but when you're in sort of these um, dense grasses when you're sneaking around, it goes transparent, which makes it a lot easier to sort of, you know, keep your bearings, but also uh, it looks a bit weird. So, I'm still unsure about it. I love it in concept. And it's incredibly good for looting as well, as we'll get to. So, uh, there's some creatures up there. Which look pretty fantastic, I must say. Timid canid, huh? Or canid, because they're canines. You know, dog things. Very fancy dog things. Oh god, he saw me. Oh no. Oh no. I, was, I wasn't in the grass. Ooh, I think we upset him. I think it's okay, though. I don't think he can catch us. I don't think he can come down here. It's all good. So, uh, where to now? Easy now. You've been frozen for a while. There's bound to be unforeseen side effects. Hmm. Well, alright then. Uh, hello, little guy. Oh, hello. They're so cute. I want one. I really want one of those. Uh, right. So, we've got to drop down here. And uh, classic tutorial fashion has to teach you how to heal in a safe environment so it makes you break your legs. So you can uh, use this inhaler to get your health back up. Hey, you, come here. Hello. You've tried the best now. <sighs> now try the rest. Spacer's choice. Oh, wow, that stings. Okay, so, first off. Uh, we're playing as an idiot, but you can see we can do medical stuff, right? So what's up with that? That that seems counter to to the 
you know, how we're playing this. It doesn't, because the Dunning-Kruger effect is in play, and we think that we're clever. We're too stupid to realize that we are, right? So we're going to think that we're a doctor. It just so happens any any complete moron could patch this guy up. But also, we're very nice, so we will offer to help whatever we can. So uh, sit still. I'll patch you up. Oh, looks like the bleeding stopped. I owe you one. Hope you don't mind me omitting this little exchange for my report. Spacer's Choice doesn't like us accepting outside help. Um, Spacer's what? Oh, we're all part of the Spacer's Choice family here. Not that I deserve to be. Can't even deliver a company slogan. We were out on patrol. I saw a marauder camp up in the hills. Thought I could take him. Then my gun misfired. Right through my sight. I mean, what are the odds of that, right? Just barely scraped by with my life. Crawled in here and blocked off the exit with those canisters. So what I love is that um, Space's Choice is clearly like a budget thing. Um, you know, the fact that he says, um, uh, you've uh, tried the best, now try the rest. Space's Choice. Um, Space's Choice is clearly just a budget thing. So the idea of it shooting, you know, him shooting himself with that gun is just because the guns are so terrible. Uh, which I think is really funny. So it's just, there's a lot of... Um, a lot of things in this game so far that I've seen um, that they really reinforce the idea of these different brands and you know other things in a comedic but believable way. It's very difficult to deliver f like you know comedy while also reinforcing the world that they're in in a believable way. Um, that's impressive. So uh, points there. Although, like I said, haven't got very far, but still points. Um, so. Uh, Let's see, what's this about Marauders? Uh, what are you doing out here? Or oh, you're hiding in a cave and you blocked off the exit, you're as good as dead. I'm gonna say, uh, what's this about Marauders? Gibbering, flesh-eating, law-breaking, unemployed lunatics with guns. Some hullhead grounded their spacecraft out in the open. That's a real good way to attract Marauders. See those canisters by the entrance? Marauders come sniffing around in here, and I can take them all out with a single shot. Not bad, huh? I've got a better idea. Give me that gun and I'll and I'll get help. Yeah, okay. You look like you know your way around a gun. Got some spare ammo. Not counting the bullet in my side. Here, you can have my saber too, for patching me up and all. All Spacer's Choice weapons are now 30% less likely to malfunction. You've tried the best, now try the rest. Spacer's Choice. Yes, nailed it that time. <laughs> I like God, Pelham. Um, so, uh, I could just leave. Or we could ask some things. I'm, I want to ask some things, okay? I'm curious about our new friend here. So, uh, can you tell me where I am? You hit your head or something? You're in Emerald Vale. We're a Spacer's Choice community. Edgewater's a little ways down. Uh, prettiest place in the Vale. Be sure to stop by a provisioner's for a can of our famous Saltuna. Uh, do you know anything about the Hope? The Hope? Is that some sort of fancy new drug? Are you with Auntie Cleo or something? Don't take this the wrong way or nothing, but I'm not allowed to fraternize with Cleo workers. Company policy. Well, I guess that's that then. So, uh, I'm off, friend. See you later. Uh, ooh, hello, Magpick. And some gourmet Saltuna fillets. And uh, what's this in here? <gasps> Dehydrated water tablets. Hell yeah. Uh, Tartarus sauce. Uh, <laughs> Tartar sauce, but you know, Tartarus. Uh, Magpick, uh, pre-sliced bread, uh, fast ration pill. All right, a few bits and bobs kicking around. You back here? No. Yeah, then we're good. So yeah, all spacer's choice. I do love the um, just again. It's part of the art style, really. It's a unifying thing. Just like the art style when you're looking around, it's very much a sort of a an old timey vision of the future. And they even use sort of old timey. Uh, graphic design, you know, and all the brands and stuff. It, it's very coherent. Damage my ears! Ugh. Oh, what just happened? Can you hear me? What in the hell? This... Sorry, Phineas. Um, right. Back outside, huh? Hibernation. Complications detected. Tactical time dilation. Due to complications stemming from you being revived after an extended hibernation, your brain processes time differently. Pressing the tactical time dilation TTD, button slows down the world, giving you time to think, as well as take action. 
You have limited time in this mode. Standing still drains your TTD meter very slowly. While moving and attacks drain it faster. The TTD meter uh, refreshes slowly over time. Well, alright then. Sounds good. Sounds good. Right. So. <laughs> These subtitles are brilliant. <laughs> Muttering. He was snarling a second ago. Uh, yeah, so we also got a pop-up saying uh, some things can uh, explode when hit. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty classic. Um, the barrels explode because there's no barrel like an exploding barrel, right? Also, these little... These little guys show up on the on the radar as well. Do you notice that? That's cute. Uh, right, so. Let's go slow motion just so we can see it. Very satisfying. And... Oh, going to have to go to weapons. Uh, TNL, weapon safety training, weapon management. You can have up to four weapons equipped at any time by dragging them. Um, up to the slots at the top of the screen. On this page, you can also inspect your weapons, compare them, flag them as junk, or break them down for parts. Players with the engineering skill can repair weapons on the screen as well. Take care of your TNL weapons, and they'll take care of your enemies. I want to put this in here, too. Because I want to shoot this boy. Not shoot, stab. I want to not shoot this boy. What? 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 Where? Where did he go? Okay, well... Guys, I don't think we can loot him, because I'm pretty sure we hit him and he ragdolled through the wall. Oh no, there he is. He bounced off. Thank god. I was worried then. So he's also got a sentry saber. Look at this chap. That is that is a crumpled bone heap of a person. <laughs> Not ideal. Right, and then there's this chap as well. Uh, bit cartridge and light ammo. I'm pretty sure bit cartridges are money in this game. I haven't got to a vendor yet, so who knows. Oh, hello. Hacking and picking locks. Your hacking and lockpick skills help you get into places you're not meant to be. Uh, mag picks are used to break open locks and bypass shunts are used to break computer encryptions. If your skill is high enough to break the security, you will see how many mag picks or shunts you need and how long it will take. Raising your skill will lower the number of items used and speed up the process. So I do like that. So if we were better at it, we'd need fewer resources, but it means that if we just make sure that we have a ton of the resources, then we can probably pick um, a lot more things successfully, which is kind of cool. I like that. So you're not, uh, uh, you're not sort of, you're not forced into not being able to do something, um, you know, just because you've got a lower skill. It just means it, it's more difficult to do it. Um, and more mag pick there. Tarmac and cheese. I don't know. I don't want to know what's in there, really. Uh, Pre-sliced bread, brilliant, fast ration pill, fish sticks with an X, so you know it's cool. And, uh, yeah, let's open this, because we can. So that's going to take uh, four of our mag picks. Telescoping staff. Okay, that's a weapon. Two-handed melee, and special effect knockdown. The iconic spacer's choice, telescoping staff, can be modified in many ways for additional cast. Now available in Mark II. Let's have a look, because there's actually fluff on all of these, which is pretty cool. Light pistol. This is probably the most common handgun in the entire colony. It's not a bad little gun, and it's a great source of parts. <laughs> Basically, just just tear it apart. It's a, that makes it better. Um, and then the sentry saber. Again, space is choice, of course. Um, this melee weapon is standard issue to military recruits who are taught sword play before. Excuse me. Before being taught ranged combat. Coated with Spacer's Choice, patented, never dull finish. This blade stays durable for at least 20 swings. <laughs> 20 swings, that's it. That's wonderful. Um, Alright, let's get this staff equipped. Because that looks very satisfying. Oh no. The Sprat is dead. Oh. Well, that's really sad. I must have blown him up. I feel really bad about that. He was adorable. Aww. But yeah, so this is uh, this is crazy. Space destroys telescopic friggin' bat. That's what this is. This is madness. Okay, we're in the grass here. Here we are. Um, all right. Slow down time, and let's just shoot his face off. Ooh, got him. We got him. I don't see any red on the radar either, so I don't think his friends noticed. What's that noise? Nothing. There's no noise. What are you on about? 
So, um, yeah, so basically, I want to play a very friendly character, right? Tries to help everybody. But I know these are baddies. I know these are bad guys, so... It is what it is. I think he saw us. Ah! Got him. Oh, hello. No. <laughs> Alright. Uh, that guy's got nothing on him. We haven't looted that other guy that we shot yet. Here he is. Alright, what did he have? There's a sentry saber. Um, Alright, well that wasn't very clean, but we got him. That's the thing, we don't have great sneak skill. Um, we're a bit dumb, so it's fine. It's fine. What I love about this idea for a playthrough, um, which, <laughs> I mean, hopefully won't come across too much, but if I do something stupid, just because, you know, I'm not the brightest person in the world, um, I can just blame it on role-playing. Alright, well, let me take in the sights first. I love that there's just constantly little ships flying off and things. It looks cool. And birds, but also, like, look, spaceships taking off over there. Which is very cool. Interesting place. And, uh, nice big ship. Clearly, clearly parking illegally. Hello there. Don't know where you came from, stranger, but you best keep your head down. There's marauders hereabouts. And worse, landing violators. Call on that rung leech. Landing in the veil without using an official Spacer's Choice landing pad. The I'd nerve. Be with a fine if it weren't for all these marauders shambling about. <laughs> I love the idea of being, uh, you know, charming, but also got quite an ego. So, uh, you know, just, I, I think that's good. Saying they found one of the teammates in a cave is, is nice to let them know, but... The idea that we've forgotten he existed already is uh, also kind of alluring, so I'm going to go with, uh, I've already dealt with a few of these marauders. Not impressed. You pulling my limb? I, I mean, yeah, of course. Marauders. Bunch of addle brain derelicts. I could round them up all by myself. I just, you know, need a couple of winks to catch my breath. Stretch my legs some. Okay, so, um, hmm. I wonder. So we can say uh, we can give him zero on the customer satisfaction survey. I think that's too clever for us. Um, don't you worry. Sit tight. I'll handle it. Or coward. I'll do it myself. Nah, that's a bit rude. Um, do they always back down from a challenge? I, I, I think they should uh, revel in this too, as much as we do. Okay. So uh, do Spacer's Choice Guards always back down from a challenge? Well, sometimes. Management's real good at cost-benefit analysis. But... Seeing as I'm the acting manager in this situation, you know what? You're right. It's time we cross those marauders off, find whoever owns that ship, and file a full report. Then it's gonna be fucking laminated. Yeah, let's do it. Leroy Jenkins. Sod. Hooray! Job well done. Oh, hello. Oh, I killed a little parrot dog. I mean, it's quite an angry one. It did try and, you know, a couple of them did chase us off a minute ago. Um. Okay. Is that everybody? Where are the other bodies at? Bodies. Hello? Oh, well, I guess that'll do. Um, cool. So, here's the ship. We've made it to the ship. This is going to take a lot of paperwork. Yeah, I mean, it is murder, so there is that. All right, let's get in the ship. Please okay. be informed that this vessel contains no valuable plunder. Well, we don't need plunder. What's this? That's... That's a Smile camera. For my surveillance device, Marauder. I am tracking your every move. <laughs> That's an old-timey camera. You know, I actually have an old-timey camera. It's got the sort of telescopic thing that you, like, pull the front down and it pulls the lens out. Very fun. I don't know if it works. I can't get film for it, but hey. I wouldn't know how to develop it anyway. Um, Roger, please be informed that ignoring me is dangerous for your health. Hmm. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have taken that out of that locker, an come to think of it. access of space-faring vessels is a crime. Please hmm. submit yourself to the authorities. Hello, Marauder. 
I am Ada, the autonomous digital astrogator of this vessel. Please be informed that I am authorized to use violent retribution against unwanted solicitors. Please return any misappropriated equipment and exit this vessel in an orderly fashion. Failure to do so will result in your immediate destruction. Um. So here's how we we. Well, no one stands up to us, right? Usually, because we're we're handsome. So um, but. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that AI knows that we're as handsome as we think we are. So, I don't appreciate being talked to that way. I have been programmed to communicate with diplomacy and tact. Please allow me to demonstrate. Gesture procedures initiated. Disengaging airlocks. Prepare to eject all boarding parties in five, four, three, two, one. Great! I'm getting shot into space twice in one day. You are still here. My deception protocols have failed. I have been programmed to express disappointment. Um, <laughs> the idea of it dawning on us finally that it's Hawthorne's ship, I quite like. Uh, is this Hawthorne's ship? This vessel is the registered property of Captain Alex Hawthorne. I am incapable of accepting orders from anyone other than Captain Alex Hawthorne. Um, well, that's a bit direct. Um, Hawthorne's dead. I'm sorry. I understand. I will require some time to process this information. Thank you for your patience and for your honesty. I am programmed to take orders exclusively from Captain Hawthorne. If I accept your orders, then you must be Captain Hawthorne. Do you understand? Smile and nod. So, um, yeah, dumb is the option we're always going to go for if it's available, okay? That's just, that's just the, that's the rule, okay? We see dumb, even if there's a better option, we're doing dumb, alright? That's what I'm going with every time, because we're dumb. And, uh, I'm going to lean into it. So, uh, hmm. Excellent. Welcome back, Captain Hawthorne. Unfortunately, our engine is currently inoperable. Our main drive suffered a critical power failure, and we were forced to make an emergency landing. The main drive's power regulator has been irreparably damaged and must be replaced. Um, I'm going to go with engineering. I'm going to go with that. Um, because I think the idea of uh, us not knowing what it is, but sounding like we do, again, very appropriate. Um, I doubt I'll find a part like that just sitting in a garage. A garage? How do you say that in America? I don't know. of locating a power regulator within a worker settlement falls within acceptable parameters of certainty. High-capacity power regulators are sometimes employed in the electrical networks of worker settlements. I have taken the liberty of printing you a new captain's identity cartridge. Please try not to lose it this time. This cartridge identifies you, Alex Hawthorne, as the registered proprietor and captain of the Unreliable. Do you understand? Captain Hawthorne of the Unreliable. I like it. Thank you. I appreciate your cooperation. Best of luck in your search for a power regulator. Try to stay alive this time. Ooh. Well. We're level two, guys. We're level two. Uh, we should go ahead and do that. Oh, oh, hello. Uh, you've been promoted. Level up. Congratulations. You have gained enough experience to go up a, uh, go up a level. Open your character ledger to advance your character. Leveling up increases your health points, gives you points to upgrade your skills, as well as gives you access to a new perk every other level. Keep leveling and you'll be in upper management material in no time. All right, I can do that. I can do that. Let's have a look. Um, so, Auntie Cleo. Auntie Cleo's management training. Skill improvements. Every time you level up, you earn skill points to spend on improving your skills. Spending a skill point on a core skill, melee, improves all of your specialized skills in that group up to a maximum of 50. After 50, you can add points directly to specialized skills up to 100. Every skill improves as it grows, but special unlock bonuses occur every 20 points. Read each skill description to see what they are. Armor, consumables, and status effects can temporarily raise or lower your skills. This helps or hurts skill checks and your skills are passive bonuses, but won't give or take away the skill unlocks. Work diligently, improve yourself, and you too can achieve middle management. I thought I was heading towards upper management, but... 
Okay. See how it is. So uh, one thing I do like is, um, as as she was saying, uh, we're leveling up the categories, essentially, because none of them are at 50 yet. So um, I really like that. I think that's really fun. Uh, uh, hang on a minute. Why are these so much higher? Oh, because the hibernation suit giving us buffs on that. That's cool. Yeah, hibernation suit. It's putting up all our tech stuff. So yeah, what we're wearing, that's helping our skills. Isn't that fun? Very fun indeed. And I've got to say, still looking devilishly handsome. Like 80s level handsome. Um, cool. And inspiration got up because of the you know the team mascot. Tossball uh, team mascot. That's cool. Right, so yes, we want to put things up, don't we? Um, I mean, defense would be useful, probably, honestly, but, yeah. Go dialogue a bit. Maybe. We can get them to 40, which would give us uh, Terrify, Air of Effect goes up, and Scramble Duration goes up. So that's for creatures, that's for robots, and that hasn't gone up at all yet. That's fine. Um, also, ranged or melee is kind of the big question we're doing here. I think being um, into um, Tossball, you know, being a Tossball um, competitor, melee sounds like a good idea, but I think just range is probably better. Um, I'm not really sure. Stealth might be useful too, for the sneaking. Um, heck, we could have been a gymnast. Who knows? Who knows? Um, maybe we did all... I think we did all the sports, honestly. I think we did all the sports. So I'm going to go with... Oh, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. I think range can be more interesting, generally. But melee does seem like fun. So I think we'll put up melee a bit. Oh, not much, because I leveled up them so much. Which, again, also works. Um, I like that that's nice and high. So, that'll have to do. Yep, I accept. Auntie Cleo knows. Friends make everything better. Companion abilities. We did just get those. Um, you can command your companions to use their special abilities on the enemy you are targeting. So, C and V. C and V, huh? Alright, I guess I can... Yeah, I can, I can do that. I can do that. Combat Dialogue Abilities. You have unlocked a Dialogue Combat Skill. When attacking the correct type of target, they will they are automatically debilitated. Good. Good. I'm glad. And now, Perks. On Dean Cleo Specialized Management Seminars. Selecting Perks. Welcome to the Perk Selection. On the screen, you can choose which perks to buy with your skill points. You... Get a new perk point to spend every two levels. You can also acquire perk points through gameplay, such as accepting a floor. Acquiring five new perks makes the next tier of perks available to you. Uh, Auntie wants you to be your best to help her be the very best. Alright, cool. So, uh, as you see, we've got a load of perks. So this one, plus 50% base, he base health. Pretty damn good, actually. That's pretty handy. Because uh, how much health have we got? I can't see it here. I have no idea. These are, I mean, it's 50%, so it's still... It doesn't matter how much health we have, it's, you know, an extra 50%. Um, tactical time dilation meter max goes up, so we can slow down time longer. Uh, better damage when alone in a party. Nope, we're not going to be a lone wolf. We're going to have lots of friends. That's the plan. Um, strider, better walk speed. Better sprint speed there as well. Um, better, so lower weapon armor durability loss, so stuff will stay in good, um, good nick for longer. Precision. Puts up companion crit chance, which is pretty cool. Uh, that puts up our armor rating. This basically means that vendors will stock more ammo and consumables, which is interesting. Extra carrying capacity by 50. At the moment we're on 100, so it's an extra 50%, which is, again, pretty huge. Um, that's the tactical time dilation recharge rate, so we can't use it for as long, but we can use it more often, which is pretty cool. And uh, ability to fast travel when encumbered. So if we're carrying too much, we can fast travel to a vendor with all of it. That's pretty cool. Um, plus 50% experience from companion kills. Sounds pretty good. But that's one of those things where, yes, we rely on our companion kills to you know help level us up. But I guess if enemies respawn, we can level up a bit more anyway. Uh, what I'm worried about is I don't want to use a perk that isn't going to help us later. Um... Because, you know, we, I, there is a level cap in this game, from what I know. So, um, if we do get to that level cap, this is a waste. You know what I mean? We've wasted a perk. Uh, better vendor prices there. Interesting. I might go sprint speed. If I am hitting people, it might be worth it. You know, closing the gap a lot quicker. Although just base health is probably more useful for that. So let's go base health. Oh, we can level it more than once. Maybe. Maybe not. Hard to tell. Anyway. So let's do that. That'll do cool. Alright, so uh, 
Let's have a little look around the ship, shall we? These surveillance devices allow me to monitor you constantly. Please ignore them. <laughs> I'll try. Sort of shotgun and weapon parts. Interesting. Ooh. Tossball stick. <gasps> Hell yeah. Oh. Item repair. Keeping your company gear in tip-top shape is expected, and something you're carrying needs repair. You can repair weapons and armor at a workbench using weapon and armor parts. Get them from breaking down unwanted items. Uh, players with engineering skill can repair the gear without need of a workbench. Repairing an item returns it to 100% durability and full effectiveness. Ready to cause or prevent maximum damage. Uh, keep your office equipment in tip-top shape for superior company efficiency. Uh, Alright, we've got to get the tossball stick in there. I think we'll get rid of the sword. These seem more fun. And we'll put the sword of shotgun in there. So DPS is actually lower. Um, that does cause knockback, though, which is cool. They both use light ammo. And... Alright, tossball stick does do more damage than telescopic... Stuff. If your equipment is in need of repair or modification, the Crux 2000 workbench is at your disposal, Captain. Hmm. Cool. Cool stuff. All right. Uh, go up here. Due to catastrophic power failure, all doors will remain on security lockdown. I think we just need to go get that uh, power, don't you? Yeah. Uh. Say, oh? this wouldn't happen to be your ship, would it? Because you sure walked in it like it was your ship. And if this ship is yours, well, mister, you owe Spacer's Choice a hefty fine. Afraid we gotta dock your pay. Uh, I'd like to think that we walk in everywhere like we own the place. So, um, anyway. Uh, I don't have a job. Or, you've got it all wrong. I'm a Starship safety inspector. Too clever. Or, attack him. I don't do that. I don't do that. We're a good guy. We're really nice. We want to be, you know, we want everyone to like us because we're cool um, and handsome. Um, I don't have a job. I'll wave your fee since you helped us with those marauders. If you're looking for work, talk to the constable down in Edgewater. She's got a bounty on marauders. Edgewater's not too far. Just follow the road east of here, over past the cemetery. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to inspect the crime scene before I make my report. Take care. All right. Um, over there, huh? Over there. Hmm. Alright. Uh, there's also some sort of wreck over there. Which, um... I'm not gonna lie, guys. I did, uh... This is basically as far as I've gotten. I, I, I went there, right? Came out, saw this. And then I approached it. And then, uh... Oh, there wasn't a primal ravager there last time. But, um... I did get the absolute snot kicked out of me over here. So I did... I, I'm going to come back here later, maybe when I've got help, or I'm a slightly higher level. Because right now, we have a lot of skills and things that aren't going to help us much. Because it's all speech and leadership. So it's all stuff that means we're not very good at fighting people off. So yeah, our stats are very, very, very low. Currently. Uh, oh? Oh. Someone over here too. I think we're supposed to go around that way. Rather than this way. Marauder Hooligan. We'll come back to that too, I think. So where's that cemetery they were talking about? Hmm. Those creatures? Nope, those are people. That's a guy. Okay, yeah. Yeah, can't can't have this happening. Uh Okay. And surprise. <laughs> Wow, he just didn't go down very quickly, did he? <laughs> They're cowering. Thanks for that skill I've got. Missed me. Hooray! Alright, so that went fine, I guess. Uh, nothing on the resident. Poor lad. And nothing on them either. Already been looted, I guess. Explains why they were stood around. Uh, nothing on the goon over there. And, uh, oh, this is what I love. So, um, in, like, Fallout and Skyrim, if stuff's in the, you know, in the grass, there's no hope of finding them, but it outlines them. And not only that, if you're crouching in the grass, 
it goes invisible. So you can find those people that you want to loot so easily. And that's something that just, you know, Bethesda titles had never worked out. It's, just, it's such a simple thing um, to fix. It was just never fixed. The amount of times I'd kill someone, like, out in the open, and I just couldn't find their body to loot them. It was, it was annoying. It was really annoying. Right. Let's crack it. Oh. And just another ship. Just another ship. It's fine. And another one up there, too. God, this is cool. Just starting a new adventure like this, um, I I love these kind of games. So, this coming out is just so exciting. Water's pretty beautiful, too, huh? So, yeah, edge water. Oh, look at that. Is that like a geothermal plant, I'm assuming? I mean, it's glowing red and there are pipes, so I assume geothermal. That's just, like, classic sci-fi stuff. Oh, this'll be the cemetery then, huh? Ooh. That's no fun. What's this? A little tractor thing. It's a forklift bot, I guess. God, this this is a big graveyard. Clearly things have not been going that smoothly. Hey, buddy. Don't go ambling out in those hills. That's marauder territory, friend. I noticed. Um, let's go with... Um... My pod crashed in the hills back there. Pod? What are you on about? You take a bruise to the cranium? It ain't safe out here. You'd best head into town. Avail yourself of Edgewater's high walls. And low, low prices. <laughs> I love this. Just he's, he's talking like he is an advert. Um, as I think a lot of people do in this game. And I, I find it it's just so endearing. Um... So, I never got your name. <laughs> I'm Jack Baggage. Uh, they paid a chat. Nice to meet you. I'm Alex Hawthorne. So, that is actually a lie. We can't just come clean or we can just fully embrace the fact that we're Alex Hawthorne, which is interesting. Um, so, that's kind of cool. So, we got a pair of armed guards. Um, I never not got your name. I'm Jack Package. Pleased to make your acquaintanceship. I'd shake your hand, but I've been hauling corpses. You don't want none of that on you. Name's Silas. Junior in humor for the town of Edgewater. We're all part of the Spacer's Choice family. Uh, here to talk about power regulator. I can make a bit of money. Place likes to fall into pieces. Or dumb. <laughs> uh, junior in humor. So, uh, Junior in humor? Like a comedian? No, I ain't that fancy. I just dig holes in the ground and fill them with dead folk. <laughs> Good one, friend. Good one. Um, who do I who do I talk to about a power regulator? Definitely not the junior in humor. That's for sure. If you've got business inquiries, you should stop by Reed Thompson's office. He's up in the tower above the cannery. Head into town. Follow the road. Look, you obviously ain't a worker. W what's your racket? You a smuggler? Freelancer? Um. Depends on the work. You offering me a job? Edgewater is a company town, board owned and operated. That includes the cemetery. None of us own our grave sites. We rent them from the company. Renting means money. Money means paperwork. Paperwork means signatures. Some of our families become a mite delinquent in paying their dues, you see. Wow, that is that is horrific. That is absolutely horrific. You having to rent rent grave sites for your loved ones. That's messed up. Um, let's see, uh, why can't you collect them yourself, make people pay for their own graves, uh, you want me to collect what's owed to you, I can do that. Um, I mean, we're dumb, but we're also a good guy. So, hmm, now this is a real conflict. Being dumb means easily manipulated, you know? That, this is a tough one. This is a tough one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in there, though. Uh, you're making people pay for their own graves? Company policy. If it was up to me, I'd put the whole town ten feet under. Free of charge. <laughs> here's, here's, here's a uh, junior in humor. That was, that was funny. Um, why can't you collect these fees yourself? Got a backlog of graves to fill. Bodies won't bury themselves, you know? Um... I, 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 uh, I don't know. I, I'm wondering if we take it, it'll lead to interesting conversations with the people that we're collecting the debt from, which I think could be quite fun. So I'm going to go for it. 
Um, and this could just be a learning experience, not that our character is capable of learning. So, all right, I'll collect your fees for you. Four workers still haven't paid up. Phyllis, Conrad, Ludwig, and Martin Abernathy. He's a special case. You may want to twist his arm a little. Uh, Abernathy. There's Abernathy's in Fallout. So that's... Might not be... Might not be a reference. Could be. You never know. Um, why is Abernathy a special case? Where can I find these people? Conrad's got a barbershop in town. Phyllis works at the cannery most hours. Abernathy... I ain't seen him in a few days. His domicile is near the cannery. You'll find him in town. All except Ludwig, that is. He's over by the landing pad. Hmm. Why is Abernathy a special case? He just is. Look, I don't want to get into it. Just make sure he pays up. Well, all right then. Um, what I'm hoping will be the case is that um, old Mr. Abernathy will be locked. Uh, would have locked himself in his room again. That's what I'm hoping for. But we'll see. So that is uh, creepy as hell. Clearly owned by Space's Choice. This settlement. Okay. Where to? Just head straight in. Transition to Edgewater. I can do that. Okay. More experience for discovering Edgewater. I like that. It's interesting. Very Wild West. I like it. Oh, the cannery. Did say that person was near the cannery, right? I mean, if... The boss is going to live anywhere. It's going to be here, right? It's just got to be. Discovered a cantina. Again, that sounds useful. You going anywhere? No, can't go in there. Hmm. Saltuna Cannery. Okay. Saltuna. Emerald Vale. On Terra 2. Hello, corporate guard. You're safer inside the walls. I am inside the walls. All right, let's just head straight in, shall we? No one at reception. Uh, Nico pad. Dehydrated water tablets. I don't want to steal any. Let's use the lift. Old timey lift. Love it. <laughs> Monkey Argo. I'm sorry, Mr. Thompson, sir. You asked why it's taking so long to fix. The answer's technical. Don't apologize. Just try using small words. Seems we've got a guest. Really now, Parvati, I do wish you'd spoken up. I do apologize. I was given no forewarning of your arrival, or I might have welcomed you at the gates myself. Um, are you Reed? I was told I should speak to you. I'm Reed Thompson, Outpost Administrator. I cannot help but notice you are not in uniform. Um, do I have wrong idea about me, uniform, or... I don't work for Spacer's Choice. Of course not. I don't have that kind of luck. Seems I allowed my excitement to run away with my wits. Been a few seasons since we've had a visitor pass through. Uh... My ship needs repairs. I'm looking for a power the regulator. The regulator we got is hooked up to the town transformer. Mr. Tobson ain't liable to be keen on dismantling it. I beg your pardon. I am most emphatically not keen on any such thing. I can't let you have our power <laughs> regulator. But I happen to know of another one. And I happen to know exactly how you may retrieve it without frying yourself in the process. Uh, frying myself. Oh, yes. Saw someone put his hands on a regulator while the power was running. His legs were still twitching when we buried him. There's a power regulator in the old botanical lab. It's mostly abandoned, so all that power is being squandered. Go down to the geothermal plant. Reroute power from the botanical district over to us. Once their power shut down, you can have their regulator and be along on your way. So, geothermal plant, didn't I tell you? Did I say, you guys? Uh, 
I say mostly abandoned. What do you mean? I was not entirely sure how to tell you this. The botanical labs are not legally inhabited, but there are people who live there. Marauders. <laughs> what a surprise. I never would have guessed. I don't think these people take kindly to losing their power. You mean marauders? Marauders aren't people. The people living in the botanical labs. They're deserters. Former workers. I need them back at their posts. I need them to come home. Uh. Hmm. Can we solve your deserter problem? I <laughs> charge by the head. Uh, why? Or tell me what I need to do. You know, uh, why? Hedgewater is struggling. We haven't hit our production quota in years. If we don't meet our quotas this year, the company might shut us down for good. I need those workers back at their stations. Uh, hmm. uh, I've seen Edgewater. Don't they blame those workers for working out? No, I like to think we're more oblivious than that. How can I help? My hope is that by cutting off their power, you will convince those deserters to come back to town. Before you go to the plant, I want you to stop by the botanical lab. Speak to their leader, Adelaide. Tell her the power's about to go. And that it's time her band of deserters came back to town. Uh... How will I recognize, Adel recognize Adelaide? She's older than the other deserters. She's dignified. Kindly. From what I understand, her camp looks to her for leadership. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, what if Adelaide doesn't want to come back? That is not a hypothetical I enjoy entertaining. We need Adelaide back. Nonetheless, I will settle for the return of her followers. We belong to one community, the Spacer's Choice family. If we dissolve into factions, then we will all perish separately. Adelaide will understand that. Um. Mm, yeah, I'll see what I can do to help you. I want to help everyone, okay? Because I'm a good guy. Uh, all right, Reed. I'll see what I can do to help you. My dad told me all about the plant. Taught me all he knew. I could come in useful. I mean, if that's all right with you, Mr. Thompson. Sir. I hesitate to part ways with Miss Holcomb. But I cannot deny that she is talented, and may prove useful to you. You will need an administrative passcode in order to enter the plant. I am trusting you with mine, and trusting Miss Holcomb to guide you if you'd like. Uh, sure! I can use the company! Great! I got my wrenches, and diagnosticators, and hairpins, and engine tape, so... I'm all set! Lover, Well, I'm Lover. glad to hear that. Best of luck to you, and thank you again for your help. It is a lot to ask of a stranger, I know. Let's get going. Oh, hello. CMP, new management manager seminar. Oh, I got an achievement. Isn't that nice? Aw. Um, so, companions. You've gained a companion. There are characters that join you in your adventures and help in a variety of ways. Um, so, a few pluses here. So, um, companions provide combat support. Their skills enhance your skills. They increase your carrying capacity. You can unlock special companion combat abilities with the inspiration skill. Learn more about your companions in the companion ledger. Cool. So, uh, we have Pavati now, which is cool. Um, she seems awesome. Just first impressions. Seems cool as hell. And, uh, we'll get to know her. For sure. Um, so gaming chair, clearly. Um, cool. I think this will be it for this episode, guys. You know, we've got a load of missions. We've got someone else to get to know. You know, a new friend. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, we've met some interesting characters. We'll have to see if this guy is uh, the villain of the piece. Or if indeed it is just a bunch of marauders and um, deserters that have left. But um, he seems like a corporate big wig, And I assume that means he's a baddie. Who knows? Who really knows? Um, and wow, that to me looks like it caused some serious seizures so that, that's that's a hologram that's a hologram thought that is that that's a hologram that's cool i like that i like that a lot very um very sci-fi like just huge huge devices casting holograms when really you could just have a poster <laughs> i think that's pretty great it's just, that doesn't seem very efficient. Anyway, um, so yeah, guys, if you enjoyed this, please do comment, like, and subscribe, and be sure to tune in to the next one. Have a good day, guys.